What can we do to Wego? Joe Delrone, you just welcome to the daily COVID-19 task force update. Today, well, yesterday we had a lot of news. Today we had, uh, we have a little less news for you in terms of uh, hard-hitting stories. Uh, something we've needed for a long time was the ability to smile, a reason to smile, and today. We had that reason as a parade took place to pay tribute to those on the front lines and um, it really was a spectacular event. We'd like to talk first to the, uh, the person who had the idea to do this and joining us on the line from uh, K1037 is the Commercial Traffic Coordinator, Sandra Sherman. Sandra, first of all, welcome to the program. Secondly, as Commercial Traffic Coordinator, you certainly caused some traffic today. It was an <laughs> awesome event. Congratulations, first of all, on this. Tell us how this came about. I began seeing, a while back actually, I began seeing videos on the internet of um, similar uh, parades, like uh, not just locally, but like across the country and whatnot. And I saw more, I didn't think anything of it at first, but I, I, as I saw more and more tribute parades, I said, well, why don't we have that here? This town is perfect for it. So I devised a plan on paper, see how it would uh, pan out. I brought it forward to the Gunawagi Task Force. This was about at least about a month ago now. They were the first people I brought up the idea to. And they liked the idea, but they said, let's hold off on it for now. We will get back to you. And they did. A few weeks ago, about two weeks ago, I got confirmation from them that where they uh, said, uh, okay, go ahead with it. So I then consulted with the K103 staff and we made a, a further plan. We got uh, everybody involved, where everybody played a role. Here we are, led, led up to today. And today turned out to be, first of all, a beautiful day. You couldn't ask for a, a, a better day. Sunshine, nice yes. temperatures. Um, so, Take us through this morning, you, uh, you leave the radio station, you head off to the Ganawaga Sports Complex. What were your expectations? What was it like? My we met at the radio station, the other staff and I, and then we made our way to the sports complex parking lot, which isn't far away. And at that point, I kind of held my breath hoping, please let there be some cars there besides the Peacekeeper car and Mochi. <laughs> and when the parking lot came into view and I saw cars and school buses and balloons and ribbons and I was like, I was like wow, <laughs> very pleasantly surprised at the turnout and it didn't even end there because this was only maybe just after 11 a.m. and in the uh, half an hour leading up to departure time, cars just kept arriving and arriving and arriving and even at the point where the parade was pulling out now and ready to start, cars were still getting there to join in the procession. So the turnout was incredible, way beyond expectations. It, it certainly was. And uh, just what was it like when you, tell us where your route kind of, uh, you, you passed by the peacekeepers, you went down the highway. Uh, just give us a little recap of where you went and what the reactions were. We left, uh, our jumping point was the arena parking lot. Our first uh, stop along the way of, uh, was, um, the Kanawagi Peacekeepers, they have a large staff, so we stopped to acknowledge them, of course. And there was a good turnout there. Whatever available staff was there was able to come out and view the parade. And then we moved on, uh, K1037 being next. Uh, of course, most of us were in the parade, but we did have representation onto the side. Our news director, Paul Gray, Luan, the ones that have to work every day and bring us all the news regarding uh, the pandemic. They were there, and then we kept moving down the highway. We passed by step by step. Their um, child care uh, givers, you know, they were very much part of the parade. We moved all the way down the highway to uh, the gas station, Rapids. Uh, Mohawk Market has a huge staff. They all turned out on their front porch to view the parade. It was very much for them as well. We were very happy about that. Uh, yeah, moving further down the highway, Village Variety, uh, Dustin's, the pharmacy on the highway. Then we turned towards the bank parking lot, uh, the services complex. We circled the parking lot at the Case Populaire, and because um, the uh, Case Populaire has a huge uh, staff as well, the post office, uh, Rugley's, Carly's Convenience. We saw people standing on the roof of the services complex, <laughs> which was so cool. <laughs> 
and took social distancing to, to an extreme, but it was perfect. And then we came back out of the parking lot and we headed all the way up the river road. And we, uh, Cadbury Hospital was our last stop. That was kind of like our grand finale. It being having rather the largest staff because most of uh, the healthcare professionals there are frontline slash essential workers. And the turnout was amazing over there. Yeah. Was, if there's like, one thing, one, if there's one thing that you can tell us the, the feeling you had as you, you know, as you finished up this big event today, what was it like? What, what are your thoughts on that? It was, it was just it was a sense of accomplishment, I guess you can say, because when you plan something, it's like throwing a party and only hoping that people will show up because there's no guarantees. So we had no idea of the turnout, but on the parade route, the amount, first of all, the amount of people in the parade, the cars showed up, and the people lining the sides of the streets on the highway. And what really struck me, and I had said this earlier, was the looks on people's faces, the smiling, the happiness, the waving, the participation, the just um, being there, the sense of joy of having such a happy, fun event happen in this town after, in the middle of everything we're going through. But I just really want to say that um, K103 uh, asked for, asked you to respond and you went beyond our expectations. You really answered by really showing up and participating and showing our appreciate your appreciation and support for our frontline workers. All right. Well, so it was just a feeling of exhilaration, I guess you could say, because it turned out so well, so very well. Well, I'll tell you, it was... Uh it was a great job, uh, Sandra. You got the, the community out uh, at a time, I think, when we really needed it. Congratulations, on, and on behalf of the entire town, Yao Goa. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's amazing what a little teamwork can do. I didn't do this by myself. We had the whole K103 staff in there. And before I go, I just want to give out another huge, huge thank you to the Gunawagi Peacekeepers, to um, K the K103 staff, to Muji Mobile Music, he kept the crowd going, to Public Works, who brought out several of their school buses and really uh, tied up the parade nicely. And again, to the town folk in Gunawagi for showing up in droves, in mass, massive numbers. It was awesome. Really, really made the parade. All right, Nyao Koa, Sandra. All right, take care. Um, also uh, from K103 is the uh, K103 7 is the uh, morning man who uh, is also uh, well he's a mild-mannered morning man by day but uh, sometimes he has to be a superhero and joining us is uh, Denon Phillips from uh, K103 7. Denon, uh, welcome along to the program. Good morning, what time is it? <laughs> um, you had, you, you were in the parade early, uh, early on in there and you had a nice, a nice sign, which I thought was really apropos for the day. Tell us a little bit about that and some of your thoughts on today's event. Well, as you can tell, I'm dressed up as uh, some guy named Spider Guy. Uh, but uh, the real heroes are the ones who are on the front line, such as the peacekeepers over at the fire department over at the KMHC and uh, the people working at the stores, over at the market, the gas stations, they're the true superheroes. So we wanted to honor them today. Like Sandra mentioned uh, all earlier that uh, today was, you know, for them, the real heroes. And uh, if you look closely, uh, you notice uh, they might be wearing capes. They might be tucked in the, the back of their shirt or their pants, but uh, really they are the real superheroes out there. And uh, Today was for them. Let's talk about for for you. You you passed by and and when you saw some of those uh, first responders and people on the front lines who were there, they they came out and they they were witness to this. What was it like for you seeing their reactions? It was very. Can I take this thing off? Yes. Now you can. <laughs> <laughs> you need a haircut. I know this is my uh, COVID nineteen uh, <laughs> do. I couldn't find a bowl in the cover to uh, <laughs> cut it yet. Uh, anyways, uh, just driving by, like the, our first stop was uh, the fire, uh, uh, the peacekeeper station, and just seeing them out there with all smiles on their faces, and you, they couldn't see mine because I was in the Spider-Man mask, but I was just so happy to 
be out there to, uh, you know, give them a hand, give them a high five, things like that, just to honor them. And the same thing with the, uh, the fire department. And uh, over at the pharmacy as well, everybody uh, being outside and also staying like six feet away from each other, it was very cool to see how everybody reacted towards this. I am so grateful to be a part of it and to to be on, I guess, be on the front line of that parade to lead the charge and just see all those smiles. It was fantastic. Well, uh, it was a, a wonderful event. We'd like to thank you for taking a, a little time to join us this afternoon. And uh, you take care. All right. Thanks, Joe. Everybody take care. Thank you. All right. Then in Phillips from K1037. Uh, we'll see you on the radio. Uh, Coming up next is a gentleman who had his uh, department out there uh, in great numbers and in full regalia. And uh, we'd like to bring in David Scott, who is a member of the COVID-19 task force. You've seen him on this program before. Uh, but this time he's going to be coming from a different angle, talking about what today meant to his group of people as frontliners. David? <clears throat> Thank you, Joseph, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, I guess my first uh, reaction would be to say, wow, uh, for what happened today. I never would have thought, but I should have known better, that the support would be there for the community, from the community. I have some uh, uh, bullet points that I need to uh, refer to while I talk, otherwise I'll forget some stuff. Uh, the fire brigade has always known that they had the support of the community uh, way back in the 80s when we first did a fundraising for an ambulance and the community was there for the ambulance. And then in the 90s when we did the fundraising for the ladder truck and we raised almost a half a million dollars in one weekend of a radiothon with K103. Um, the show of support today was unexpected but was very much appreciated by all the members of the KFB and that's to say it mildly. Uh, it was very emotional. It hit here for me personally. I know some of the paramedics and firefighters also uh, were very appreciative of the show of support. Uh, medical transport was very appreciative of the show of support from the community. Uh, as you know, medical transport is also an integral part of the fire brigade and they were and are grateful for what they observed today. Uh, it's nice to see the support that the KFB and medical transport has from the community and that our work is appreciated and recognized. Uh, although we do not do this work for recognition, I can assure you that every member has the best interests of this community at heart. It is much appreciated. Thank you so much for the inspirational boost. Uh, thank you for respecting the social distancing and guidelines set forth by the task force. Um, it's been said many times before, but I'll say it again, this community is something special. Uh, this was needed and we are proud to serve you all. I would just like to say Nyawagoa to Sandra and K103 for everything they've done for all the, the services. Uh, we will see you on the other side of this insanity. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, David. And uh, I have to tell you, I, I went to the uh, fire brigade at first and I, I snapped some photos and, and just um, the, the smiles on everybody's faces was incredible. And when the, the parade actually came around the corner, I have to admit, I had uh, some tears in my eyes. I never thought that would happen. But it was really emotional to see the, the amount of people and, and the love of the community. So it was just a, a, a great day. Um, meanwhile, the parade as it made its way around uh, stopped finally at the Cattery Memorial Hospital Center where, of course, uh, the nurses and the patients and the doctors and the people working in the kitchen and uh, everybody was out there in full force. And one of those who was there was Lisa Westaway, who is, the who is the executive director. And we'd like to bring her on for some thoughts on today's event. Lisa. Thank you. So again, I'm here as well to say thank you very much for the wonderful show of support today. 
Um, just a little uh, peek into the walls of KMHC at 11.30 um, on our, our loudspeaker, advising everybody that the parade was on its way. We, we were kind of following the, the trajectory so that we could all be outside and that we could ensure that the residents were close by to be able to see as well. And there was a lot of excitement and, and happy energy uh, within the walls of the building and, uh, and, and a lot of excitement. Um, everybody was uh, outside and again yes respecting social distancing and uh, really excited and it it's impossible to describe the feeling when we see those cars coming down the street um, it was it's very heartwarming and so again on behalf of uh, all of us at KMHC thank you it was extremely uplifting and uh, and we're very grateful for the day today and for your show of support thank you All right, and finally, uh, thank you, Lisa. Uh, finally on today's program is uh, our Commissioner of Public, S Public Safety, Lloyd Phillips. Uh, Lloyd was actually out here as the uh, parade made its way uh, across the Peacekeeper Station, and he got to see it and feel it and enjoy it. So we'll bring him on now, ladies and gentlemen, Director of Public Safety, or actually Commissioner of Public Safety, Lloyd Phillips. Thank you, Joe, Lisa, David, Sandra, Lennon, the whole crew. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you know, K103 and, 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 and your staff over there who were, who were the organizers of, of this event. You know, uh, and, and definitely on behalf of the, the entire task force, you know, I'd like to say Yamagoa, uh, much appreciated. You know, and obviously, I'm sure the uh, frontline workers who are out there, as David clearly uh, mentioned, and so did Lisa, that uh, it was definitely a boost and, and, a, and a heartfelt um, uh, gesture that we all took you know, very, very personal. Uh, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to, to watch the, the, the beginning of the parade and, and, and you know, obviously having people cheering and uh, you know, waving and, 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 you know, and giving thumbs up and stuff. It's, it, it, obviously, it, it helps, helps give everybody a boost. And I think it was already said already, it was something I think our community needed at this point in time. Uh, we know we've been in this for, for two months uh, and, know, and we know we're in it for, for a while longer. And to have that support shown for, for the frontline workers is, is extremely, uh, extremely important. You know, and and I'm, I'm glad the way it rolled out to talking about, you know, we're, we're not only talking about the frontline workers in terms of, of, of the, the fire, ambulance and police and, uh, and, and task force, but also acknowledging those people who work in the stores and who pump the gas and do different things that are, are essential services to our community. And, and they're, they are also equally, uh, you know, worthy of, of being grateful for, for doing the job that, that they do. Uh, you know, so again, uh, no, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, no, on, on, on a more personal level, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I certainly appreciate the support when many cars have passed by and they would look, look at me directly in the eye and you know, give me the two thumbs up or give me one of these things and you know, it really, it really you know, touches your heart to, to see, uh, see that level of support uh, you know, by a large amount of people. Uh, so again, you know, go to, to you all. That helps you know, give us the boost we need because we know, I said, we're not, we're not, we're not through this pandemic yet. We know we need the support from the community, and as as a, as a task force, you know, we do have you know many uh, tough decisions that were made. You know, and and, and they, they are they do they do weigh heavy on our minds and on our hearts, and we have many tough decisions making moving forward, and and again equally as as, as hard on on us on, on a personal level, and, and we take that responsibility very seriously. And by seeing the support shown today, that helps us you know, make, those, make those decisions uh, moving forward that are here for the health and safety uh, of our community. So with that, you know, I, I really appreciate that and, and, and it's gonna help guide us and, I, and support is clear and uh, now will go to you just as much as you said now will go to us. So that wraps it up for, uh, for this uh, COVID-19 task force update. An extraordinary day during extraordinary times. And we really appreciate everybody's um, participation. 
so many people from the community, from all age groups. We had little kids, grandchildren, grandmothers, grandfathers, and uh, just um, a day that showed what this community is all about. So let's, uh, let's all stay in this together and fight the good fight and trust each other as we move forward. So on behalf of everybody here at the COVID-19 Task Force, thank you all so much. Now go to our guests, uh, Sandra Sherman, Denon Phillips, David Scott, Lisa Westaway and Lloyd Phillips for helping to give some of their thoughts on today's wonderful event. Thank you all. We'll see you next time. Nyaokoa dano onigiwahi.